Hi, my name's Eric, welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about Tinashe. Today I'm going to be talking about her 2015 mixtape, Amethyst, which she released as a thank you to her fans after releasing Aquarius. I realized that I said on my first Tinashe video that I've listened to everything that she's released since Aquarius, but I realized that I forgot Amethyst. At the time, I wasn't familiar with streaming services like SoundCloud, so if it wasn't on iTunes, I didn't know about it. But I'm excited to hear it now, and as always, if you have any requests, please drop them in the comments down below, and subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week. So without further ado, let's dive right in with track number one, Dreams Are Real. <laughs> Very ethereal. Okay, so just from these opening lines, we're in a very dreamy, optimistic place, sort of similar sonically, I think, to something like Reverie. But in particular, starting with the image of the blue sky tells us that, you know, the storm has passed, the clouds are opening, and, you know, there's a sense of hope. We have the appearance of love and dreams, so we're in a place where we're feeling good. Okay, so we have a beat coming in, and you know, as we're moving towards the sounds of hip hop, we have some hip hop flex song tropes about her saying like, I'm going out, I'm making this money. And so the optimism that she opened the song with is now explained by the fact that she is feeling satisfied with her success. Maybe this relates to how she feels after the Aquarius album cycle, or maybe she's just feeling good in general. Okay, so, oh no, it's continuing. Okay, sorry. That was really cool. So um, again, towards the end of the song in particular, she used different facets of her voice. So as always, I'm impressed by Tinashe's vocals, but in particular, the song does feel like a warm hug. It's still a flex, but being like sort of instructive, I think feels a little bit more endearing than like a typical flex song where she would be comparing herself to her audience. Here she's sort of saying like, Here's a roadmap to how you can be like me and achieve the same sort of success. Track number two is wrong. Okay, you know you're wrong. Ah, the harmonies are so good. Okay. I'm still in love with you. Now we fully have the context. It's interesting. We sort of have a similar feeling to her, right? If she is being invaded or feels invaded, right? It's a person that keeps invading, coming back into her life, and she's letting them come back into her life even though they're wrong for her. We have a sort of similar experience here because we have the disorientation of not knowing exactly who they are until the chorus hits, right? Then we know that it's an old flame. Okay, so I find you in my castle and then I banish you from my heart. So she imagines herself and her world and her love life as a kingdom where the castle maybe is the heart. It wasn't like a direct sort of analog here, but you know, we can generally imagine it like that. So sort of like before she had like a kingdom of wealth, she didn't describe it as a kingdom, but we can think of royalty as being directly comparable to wealth. And now here she's saying like, I've built up my kingdom in different ways, right? I have my career, I have my personal life. This is my castle. My heart is my castle and you are an invader. Oh, okay. It feels like you're loving $10 billion away. She set it up sort of like as a distance thing, right? Like, you know, I feel like you're a million miles from me. That's a device that I believe she used on In Case We Die. She talked about putting distance between her and her lover and how that was an impediment to the relationship or just generally a symbol of being isolated and alienated. But here she's saying the separation isn't distance. 
the separation is money. And if she's building this kingdom around her heart and that kingdom is built by money, she's saying like she feels guarded by this success and this relationship is messing with that. And it's interesting to see how consistent these mixtapes are, especially in comparison to Aquarius, which came between these different releases, because Aquarius has a lot of similarities vocally, lyrically, thematically, but the consistency of the mixtapes like makes the difference of Aquarius even more apparent. So like maybe she had more resources at her disposal, maybe there were more people involved, but it's interesting to see how she approaches an album differently from a mixtape. Track number three is Something to Feel. <laughs> That's true, she shouldn't be surprised because this keeps happening over and over in the relationships she talks about on her mixtapes. Okay, yeah. She loves how it feels. She doesn't love the person, she loves the feeling. And not the emotional feeling, the tactile feeling, the feeling of the body and of the, you know, intimacy. It isn't. Okay, again, like, I'll let you play me like a symphony. On the surface, it's so romantic. It's like they're playing, like, a violin, and that's so cute. But no, she's letting him play her, like, as in manipulate her. And again, before she said, you feed me lies, now she says, you play me. He is performing the action and she is receiving it. She is passive and she is the weaker one in the relationship right now. She is letting him exert control over her and she knows that that's bad, but she just enjoys the physical dimension. So like, I can deal with it, right? Probably not. And that's when the emotional fallout happens. It isn't. Okay, once again, it comes back to money. So before, when she said that um, she felt that their love was separated by like $10 billion, again, it's like the money issue. This guy isn't really doing well financially, but she is. And that makes the relationship awkward, but also sort of subverts the power dynamic that's been going on. She's dependent on him physically, but maybe he's dependent on her financially. And now he's making her pay for her own gifts. It's like, come on, D dump him, dump him. Track number four is looking for it. True. Okay, so now she's at the point where she's like, everyone sucks. I'm the real person here. I'm the one who's successful, who's making money, who wants love, who wants a connection, and everyone around me is just BSing me and taking advantage of me, and I'm done. So this is a good point. This is a threshold that she can cross and, you know, reach some sort of fulfillment, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so now she's actually listing more of the ways that she looks for love. She mentioned um, twerking, which I mentioned the club before it could have been the place. If she's twerking, it's probably at the club, so that's not working out. On the phone, so maybe that's like long distance relationships, which makes sense for someone who's traveling for work. But she also said, I think, popping corn. I'm gonna check. Yeah, she said popping corn. Huh, give me a second to think about it. Maybe she's at the movies? Yeah, honestly, I'm totally fine if I never understand that line because it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> I've tried Monopoly because I know you play games. Again, of course, it comes back to money. Track number five is Wanderer. Okay. Interesting. Wanderer, you are living in between the lines. The idea of reading between the lines is like uncovering underlying messages or secrets. So here, maybe it's 
again, like the sort of dishonesty. Like if you are living between the lines, you're not, you know, the text itself. It's all about the subtext with you. It's not about how you act to people or the facade you put on or, you know, what you say to people. It's really what's underneath. What are your underlying motivations? <laughs> Okay, so now she's saying, like, you believe in magic, like, you know, you can, you know, envision a future and, like, your goals and dreams and all that, just like she opened the mixtape with the idea of, like, envisioning your dreams and going and getting it. But she's saying, like, you're not even trying. You have no ambition. You're, you know, the opposite of me. I'm going for it, and you're not. So, like, how do you expect this to work out? Oh, this is so good. Okay. Okay, this is, first of all, so good. It sounds like sort of early 2000s R&B, but it almost seems like she's saying here, like, maybe you and I together can actually reach for something. Like, maybe I can take you by the hand and lead you where you want to go. Or she's saying, like, maybe we have different roads to take. I guess we'll find out. But I think that's definitely my favorite track on the mixtape so far. Track number six is called Worth It, featuring, I believe it's pronounced I Am Sue. If I'm incorrect, I apologize. Okay, these industry dudes only want one thing. So we can sort of assume that it's money because we talked about the mad black beamer and, you know, the parking meter and, you know, these measures of wealth and money. But before she basically associated wealth with sex, right? Like what the guy in the relationship wanted was her wealth. What she wanted was physical intimacy. So the idea of the one track mind here is sort of complicated again by the money. In any other context, we would think of, you know, guys only want one thing and you know, it, our mind goes straight to the physical. But here, since money has been so involved, we don't really know. And that's what's so complicated about her life. Yeah, I've been married to this money. Again, the commitment to her career and, you know, amassing all of this wealth has gotten in the way of her relationships to the extent that it is her relationship. Okay. I don't know exactly why she's saying he's worth it yet, but, you know, she's saying you're the exception. So again, maybe we are pivoting towards a place where Tinashe can experience, even as a celebrity, healthy romantic relationships. Okay, DJ Khaled. <laughs> No. Gosh darn it. It was fun while it lasted. Track number seven, the final track on the mixtape, is called Just The Way I Like You. Okay, so now she's saying, like, it's not just a, you know, issue of my career that I have been, you know, in unstable relationships or I haven't been in many relationships. Maybe there's something about me personally, emotionally, that I'm unavailable, that I just don't want to be in a relationship. Maybe it's something beyond the excuses that I've been making. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, first of all, great vocals. Second, so she has laid out these possible flaws that she sees in herself, and she's saying, you know what, the way that things are around here, the way that things are in this industry, that's just the nature of it. I can't really trust people, so I'm just going to trust myself and keep pushing forward and keep doing what I'm doing, despite the troubles that it causes in my relationships. <laughs> Okay, so she's saying, like, my career is taking off right now. I don't really have time to slow down. I can figure this out later, but right now is my moment to focus on my career and not really worry about the relationships.
Okay, cool. I really enjoyed that. So I like that there was a, you know, quick arc here. We went from her character just being all about her career to questioning that and being like, well, maybe I do want a relationship, but I don't want a relationship with someone who's focused on the money. And then so she moves past that and is like, well, maybe I can have a relationship that works out if it's someone who has similar values to me, maybe someone who works in the industry. And then that doesn't work out. And she's like, you know what? All I need right now is the physical aspect. I can settle down later, but right now I'm just gonna continue my grind. I'm gonna continue working towards my goals because I am blowing up right now. I'm very successful. I'm happy with where I am and you know, other stuff can come later. So I like that in the space of just seven tracks, she learns all of those lessons and experiences, those highs and lows. I think as usual, her vocals are awesome. The production is distinctive and really enjoyable. Here, of course, it feels more like a mixtape. It's more textured, more synthetic than what we would find on a more polished pop record. I'm so glad that I didn't miss out on this mixtape because it was really great. I especially enjoyed Wanderer and the opener and closer. As always, if you have requests for video topics, drop them in the comments down below and please subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week. Thank you so much for being here and until next time, that's it.